friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to day one in my 2020 holiday card series. Today I'm going to be making a card using Mama Elephant's Let It Snow. So I've stamped out the images that I'll be using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with my uh, snowmen. Aren't they just so cute? Uh, so I am using BG10 and BG11 for those, laying in a little shadow underneath the hat brim and down the back side of their bodies with that BG11, blending out with the BG10 and then adding a little colorless blender to smooth that into the white area. Then I'll grab the RV10 and add some cute little rosy cheeks. And then I'll color the second snowman exactly the same, except I'm going to reverse the light source and put it down the right hand side since she's facing toward the left. So I know this is a super early start to my holiday card series this year, but I just felt like I wanted to ease into things a little bit more this year and not feel so rushed at the end of the year. So um, even though this is going to be an ongoing series for the rest of 2020, um, it won't be every single card from now until then that's going to be in the holiday card series. I'll just be adding to it a little bit at a time when I'm in the mood to make another Christmas card. So I'm moving on to the little penguin and for him I'm using C3, C5, and C7. I did a little of that C7 on the top of his head and blended out with the C5. And then that C3 I just added a little bit on the crown of his head. Um, but I didn't add that to his wings. And for the rest of his body, I'll use C1 and C0. Just like the snowman, I'm going to add a little of that darkest shade and then I'll use the mid-tone to blend that into the white areas. I'll soften the edges of that with that colorless blender once again and add some rosy cheeks to him as well. And then I'm going to turn my paper so that I can color in that beautiful birch tree. So I'm just going to stick with the C1 and C0 and add a little shading on each side of the tree and then also accentuate all of the little lines that are drawn on there. So if you are watching this video on the day that it goes live, which is September 15th, I will actually be taking part in the Mama Elephant Stampede. So I was invited to help them celebrate eight crafty years in the industry, and I was so honored to be asked. So I'm going to have a lot more information on my blog about that. So be sure to check down in the description bar to links for all of that, and um, you can help them celebrate as well. So I wanted those stripes to be darker, so I went up to the C3, and then I even grabbed my C5, and just went over a few of those to just increase that depth. And then I'm moving on to my uh, little bird, and I wanted that to be a dove, um, since doves are the symbol of peace, and I actually have a lot of doves that roost in my yard, and I always see them on my roof and everything, or in the trees on our property, so I thought that would be fun to add one. So I'm using the C0, C1, and C3 for that as well. And I did a double layer of all of those colors on her just to increase that saturation. And then of course I can't forget her little rosy cheek. I went over that a few times as well to get that to show up against the darker gray. And then I'm moving on to YR04 to color in the snowmen's noses and the penguin's beak and feet and the little dove's beak as well. And then I'm moving to my red combo, which is R29, R39, and R59. This is my favorite red combo. I pull it out all the time for Christmas because it's just such a cheery red. And those darker shades, the R59 and the R39, just add so much depth to it. So I'm using the R59 first for my shadows on the snowman's hat and then also on the sides of his scarf that's wrapped around his neck. And then for the part that's trailing out behind him, I kind of just broke that down into sections and I'm putting the darkest part where the fabric is twisted and then at the ends. 
And then I'll pull in the R39 and begin to blend that out, just making sure to go right over the edge of that R59 and pull that darker color into the mid-tone, just extending that out so that I get a lot of contrast when I bring in my final shade. But you can see that I'm not laying down too much of those darker two shades. I want plenty of room for my highlight. That R29 is just so vibrant and it really makes everything pop. So I want to have lots of room for that and just have that, you know, that depth in the little corners and in the crevices. But I'm just always pulling from the darker area toward the white so that I can drag some of that darker pigment along with it and really get a nice smooth blend. So I'm going to continue filling in all the rest of the white space on the scarf and then I will leave the hat brim and the little pom-pom white. I will color those in later. And then off screen, I'm also going to color in the little hat for the dove, just to save you some time in the video. For the other little snowman's um, earmuffs and scarf, I'm going to go with some greens. I thought I would stick pretty traditional on this card today with just one little fun pop later on. But I'm using G40, G43, and G46 for that. Um, this is a darker green combo that has a lot of contrast in it because that G40 has so much colorless blender that it really makes things nice and soft. Um, because it also has that colorless blender in it, it pushes away the darker colors. So this is another combo where I do have to do a double layer on everything just to smooth things out. But I really like how it gets so soft. It almost looks like it has a fuzzy texture to it, which I think is perfect for um, fabrics, especially since I'm doing the scarf and earmuffs with those. And then for the rest of the scarf, I'm going to do it the same way that I did on the red one, just adding that darkest color, that G46, where the fabric is twisted. And then also on the ends, where it's kind of lifted up and curved and uh, kind of twisting in the wind. And then I'll blend out with the G43 and then um, finish with that G40. And I will also color the little doves scarf off screen with that same combo. Then I'm going to move on to my penguin and I want this also to be green, but I just wanted a different shade. I'm going to be using some pattern paper later on that has a couple different greens in it. So I wanted to pull a different kind of color combo from there. So I'm using G21, G24 and G28. And this one is just a little bit darker. So I'm just coloring the same way, adding that darkness on both sides since he's facing forward. And then um, on the part that's extending out also just where it's close to the body and then at the tip. So I'm going back to my C0 and C1 for the white parts of the first snowman's hat. I could have done this earlier, but I honestly wasn't sure if I wanted to do that white or if I wanted to do it green or a different color. Um, but since I decided to go white, I'm just going to go back and do that quick. And I also did the brim of the dove's hat. And then for a fun little pop, I'm going to use YR21 and YR23 for the little leaves. And I'm going to be attaching those to my birch tree as if they are some of the last vestiges of fall, just kind of clinging to the tree um, and uh, just kind of reminding you that, you know, the seasons are in cycles. So I just thought it would be fun to have just a little bit of that hanging on through the winter. I'll take my black Sakura jelly roll pen and go over the eyes of both of the snowmen just so they are bright and shiny and it just really brings them to life. And then I'll trim these images out with their matching dyes. So I'm going to be using the Mama Elephant Slim Card Basics to create my card today. And I'm taking one of the hillsides that are included in that set. And I die cut that out of some white cardstock. 
and because I want this to be my snowbank and the snowmen are made from the same snow that's in the snowbank, I need it to be the same color as they are. So I'm adding a little BG11 at the very top and then blending that out with the BG10. And then I'll grab my colorless blender to just soften that into the white, just as I did when I colored them. And then I can set this piece aside for later. And I'm going to choose a piece of cardstock from the Simple Stories Jingle All The Way 6x8 paper pad. And I'm going to use this one that has the snowflakes on one side and the floral on the other. I will die cut that in half at 3 inches. And then I can use both pieces. So the floral piece that I'm using, I am gluing down to a piece of cheap white cardstock just to give it a little bit more stability because I want to cut some windows out of that. So I'm just making sure that that is on there nice and straight. I adhered that with some liquid glue. And then I will take the three little window dies that come in that set and I'm going to get them spaced evenly on my panel, just eyeballing it, and then I will tape them into place. I like to start with the outer two first, and then I can make sure that the middle one is centered between them, and then I will run that through my die cut machine. And then for the background, I'm going to use the opposite side of that piece of pattern paper. That's the other part that I trimmed down. Um, the other three inches and I'm stamping my sentiment on there with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink. I'm using the one that says Snow Many Hugs and I did stamp that down a bunch of times to get a good impression since that was a brand new image that I had never used before. And then I'm going to do an insert on the inside of my card instead of stamping on the card base itself because it's a darker card base. I'm going to just add an insert to make that easier and I'm stamping in chili pepper ink and I'm doing the first little snowman that I used and then the sentiment that says, tis the season to be freezing, which I thought was really cool. I did use my Picket Fence Studios stamp scrubby to just clean that image off so that I could get a better impression since it was still new from you know the manufacturer. Sometimes there's a little residue on there and that really helps clean that up. And now I'm going to create a slimline card by cutting my 8.5 by 11 cardstock down to 8.5 by 7. And then I will score that at the 3 inch mark. So I just start at the top since my scoreboard doesn't go down that far. And then I flip that around and score the rest of the way. And then I just crease that with my Teflon bone folder so that I have my card base. So now I'm ready to start assembling my card and I'm going to add that snow bank down to the bottom of my snowflake pattern paper. And then I will just make sure that everything is nice and straight on there with the frame. I'm also going to trim that birch tree down in half so that I can use it twice. I'm gonna put one half on the left and the other half on the right. And I'm just going to lift that uh, frame up and make sure that I have the tree right where I want it so that it's visible uh, behind that window. And if it's a little too long, I could just trim off a little bit with my scissors. And then I'll do the same on the right hand side, just lifting up that frame and making sure that it's going to be visible where I want it. I want to be able to add those leaves where you can see them, so that's why I really needed to make sure that I didn't cut off too much of those trees behind the frame. I used the scallop border to cut down a piece of white cardstock, and that's the same piece that I had underneath the snowbank when I was coloring it, but I just flipped that over and no one will ever know except you guys. <laughs> I didn't want to waste that paper, so I just adhered that to my card front, making sure that the scallops are even all around. And now I can add my frame right in the center there. And there you can see how I added those little leaves onto my trees. So I actually only stuck down two of those and I'll be doing something a little different with the third one. I'm going to also glue in my insert right now. So I'll just carefully lift that up and um, add that inside, just making sure that it's nice and even. 
And now I can add my images. I'll be popping those up with some foam tape so it gives them a little bit of lift. And I'll be adding the red scarf snowman on the left and the green scarf snowman on the right, just in making sure to tip her a little bit so you can still see those leaves. And I'll add my penguin in the center. I added a tiny little piece of foam tape behind the third leaf cluster. And then I'll add the dove with just some liquid glue since she's on top of the frame. So it looks like she's holding those leaves in her mouth as if she's picked those and taken them back to her nest. And then as a finishing touch, I'm going to use some stardust stickles and I'm going to add that in a little dot to the center of all of the snowflakes that are showing. And then um, I will also just add a few little details here and there with that. I didn't want to get too carried away, but it's hard to resist at Christmas time. I just think all Christmas cards need some sparkle. So I decided to add it to the snowmen themselves because snow usually has some sparkle to it. So I just added it to the sides of their faces and bodies. And then I'm also adding it to the snow drift so that it matches, just going wherever the top edge of that shows. And that is going to complete my card for today. There is a look at all of that detail and how that stickles catches the light. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed day one of my 2020 holiday card series. Let me know down in the comments if you have started making any Christmas cards yourself or when you usually start. I usually wait until after Halloween, but I just felt like I needed an earlier start this year. So anyway, if you enjoyed the video, please be sure to hit that like button and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. If you'd like to keep watching, here is day one of the previous two years of holiday card series. You can click on either one of those to check them out. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.